So thank you very much for the introduction and uh, a little bit sorry for the tech tech issue on my side. So uh, there is uh, over 80 slides with a lot of detailed information, so I'll just try to run as, my, uh, run as quick as possible. So uh, what the hand is our game, it's this one. Uh, and the studio is na uh, studio name is Charge Monkey. And I'm going to, uh, to speak about or talk about how we launched it and how, how we did it in a way of indie self-publishing. It sounds a little bit YOLO. I later explain what does it mean, the, exp <laughs> the explanation of word YOLO. So yeah, let's start. Uh, a short summary. I'll do some uh, small introduction. What we hoped for, which is the release strategy, what we wanted to do and what we planned for a couple of months, nearly years, actually. What we actually did to be in profit and survive as a startup because it's extremely difficult to survive. And on the very end, if the time allows us, uh, we'll discuss also the fails and key learnings. So, introduction about me. There is not much to say. I'm just working in the games for over 15 years and I was happy to be at the right time and meet the right people to help uh, found a studio focused on free-to-play mobile gaming. Our studio was founded in uh, Q1 2015. Most of us are based in Prague, and we also have a couple of guys who are not Czech and Slovak. Yeah, Chen. <laughs> and uh, right now, currently in these days, are, we are 18 people, and there's a funny story because I changed industry veterans for impressive track record. Our lead engineer came to me a couple of months ago after our fiasco with the release and he said, look, we should maybe remove the veterans because the only thing where we are veterans is that we are all, all nearly 40. So that's why impressive track record. Uh, about our game, it's a classic line defense game and uh, the meta or how we monetize uh, obviously in our purchases focusing on collecting heroes, expanding the collection. We wanted to focus and to you know like pop out from the crowd which uh, proof itself was one of the best decision we did on the very beginning that we went our own approach in terms of visual animations and stuff and the game is out right now after the fiasco. We call it just Soft Launch 2.0. And we are, thanks also to the visual and to the overall style, uh, we are having 4.7 stars on Android ratings from the players and over 4.5 stars on iOS. A couple, uh, couple of user reviews, as you can see. And I had to update the presentation yesterday evening. We got another 40,000 ratings in the last two months, which is awesome. This is uh, one of the direction we had in the art on the very beginning. That's how the game looks now. And thanks to that, we are able to achieve, together with a great, uh, great marketing creatives, uh, no more than, on average, 20 cents CPI in German territory, which is awesome. Uh, a little bit more about the about the success. We are not, you know, like discussing it too much in public. But what we achieved this year is nearly three three million installs on both platforms, and we are attacking one million gross revenues in dollars. This all, and I need to have a talk with the guy before me because he did his success, and it seems so, with the featuring. We did it without featuring on our own, in our own, you know, like hard work. Uh, this is an overview of the revenues, and as you can see, what I'll be also talking about is the dramatic increase and later the dramatic decrease. The, the green, <laughs> the green uh, column is our estimate for this month. So we are getting back to more than a break-even point where we'll be back profitable again after the month drop in October. These are a couple of KPIs which are from the actual version, as you can see. Uh, thanks also to the visual and to the decisions we did and an awesome work with uh, overall creatives, we are able to have conversion rate up to uh, more than 4% in the US, which is, you know, like awesome. And the retention, after like two years of hard work, is finally day one is on average above 50, with, with very, uh, very 
uh, driven audience, for example, from YouTube campaigns I'll be talking about later, we have over 70% day one retention, which means like more than seven people out of 10 returns next day, which is awesome. We used to have two and a half, so we nearly triple it. Uh, another thing for someone who is interested uh, in a very detailed you know, information, all the following screens are full of information, so feel free to capture pictures. If anyone is interested, I can share the presentation after, if you just give me your cards or email or contacts. So as you can see on the very beginning, uh, in 2016, when we did the first user acquisitions, we were uh, looking at 36% day one, which is something where big companies are closing the products, and luckily we did another decision and we continued. It took us a lot of money, efforts, and a personal time, and also emotions. So we were able to get, for example, with the YouTube influencers, nearly 80. The release strategy, and also, again, really quickly. So this is kind of like a take on how I see, based on all the years of experience in the free-to-play market, how I see the release of the games. Like the blue one, obviously, is next mega hit. It's done by a couple of companies. I would, I believe like it's like 1% of the companies out there on the market are doing the biggest profits. So the, these are the games from those companies. The red one is the next average game, which is probably released with a publisher who spend a lot of money into user acquisition, there is a featuring, and that's why there is the big peak. What we wanted, that was our plan, we wanted to go to the green line, which is don't be crazy on the very beginning, don't be shocked and scared, and just you know try and deliver over the time. So as you can see, that's actually July, which was our biggest so far. We did over, uh, nearly 200,000 per month. That's The strategy is kind of working. Mm. Our plan for marketing for the release, we wanted to, you know, like coming from a corporate background, we wanted to do the classic approach, which means there is a soft launch, which means like a early access, and companies can watch, you know, like what the people are doing in the game, and how to improve it, especially retention, monetization, conversions. So, yeah, now point number one, definitely to prove the KPIs, then try to get the featuring. That's the thing which my previous colleague was talking about, because that was driving his success. Also, PR and visibility, that's something which is coming from, you know, like 10 years ago when, you know, like gaming magazines were the groups which were changing the minds of the players. Like, this game is awesome, play it. Yay, millions copies sold. User acquisition, so uh, paid acquisition of uh, new players, and building the community. This is how it actually works, and you know, like what we saw. The retention, because the, the market is getting saturated, and it's uh, more and more difficult to get really, uh, to stand out or pop out of, the, uh, out of the crowd, is something extremely difficult. Like, even, uh, even like, for, for now what I read a couple of weeks ago, three and a half out of the 10 next day in the game is a successful game, which is a little bit scary. Uh, to get uh, any support or cooperation with iOS and Android, it's the guy who, I, I thought his name was Michael, uh, is about the context. So, and this is something which we totally underestimated. We simply didn't do it. PR and visibility cost money, and, uh, and the return is really questionable. I had a discussion with the guys from Pocket Gamer. Um, London and what they what they promised to deliver for money they were asking for is way 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 below efficiency as we, as we see it from our own campaigns. User acquisition everybody told us it will be two and a half to four euro or dollar for one install. With the proper approach, you can really get it down. We were able to buy people as low as nine cents sometimes. And about the com community, you need to have a proper KPIs, which means that the people are engaged, they are staying in the game, and then proper set of features. And this is all which we didn't have on the very beginning. There is a, this is like a, uh, a sort of visual of a classic approach, like a PR, PR, uh, you know, like packs which we are trying to distribute. Also, we created the booth with a, with a synchronous PV player versus player gameplay. You can see it in the other room. And my biggest question, do any, anyone think this, is, this really work, like the classic approach? No. <laughs> Actually, it didn't work at all. 
So what we did, and you know, like what, this is kind of like an interaction. We still have over 30 minutes. So right now the hard data is coming. So if you want to grab the pictures, just go, uh, you know, like feel free and do it. So what we did in seven months to return from, uh, I would say, death of the company to someone who can get more people and is thinking about next projects. We start our bigger soft launches uh, on the very end of last year. And as you can see, uh, during the campaigns, we were producing or we were, you know, like seeing a lot of peaks. The problem is that each of the line is just a hundred of players. And they came and then left really quickly. So what to do next? You know, like the, the, the core strategy was really go for iOS first. That's also like a corporate background. Go for iOS. People on iOS, on, on Apple, they are paying more. They are spending more money. And they're, you know, like their indicators are much better. So we tried it. And it obviously, as you can see, it didn't work for a small team based in Prague who is not trying to get in touch with Apple. So uh, instead of, you know, like crying, we just focused on Android because Again, like the guy before me, to, uh, before me to, uh, said, it's about the networking and context and asking for help. So this is what we did. And we saw from multiple people that organic traffic, which means people are you know, like seeing, your, seeing your game not because they were purchased, but like maybe as an accident, uh, can be, let's say, manipulated comparing to iOS. So, we focused on we focused on Android thanks to their feature of a uh, of a new application. We were able to you know like get a lot of organic traffic as you can see in the middle, and moreover uh, people were playing more and more and more. So in January we really saw promising uh, promising KPIs and we really thought yeah this is something, and we'll do it after the iOS fail. And one thing which I want to highlight and which probably everybody is saying during the presentations. Don't do, in the gaming industry, and free-to-play in, uh, industry, don't do updates or changes to the game which are not proven by other players in testing releases. This is exactly what we did after four months of work. And we released an untested update in January because we all believed it will be better. And surprisingly, it was not. And we were really deaf to, you know, like to the red lights. So this is a little bit more about, you know, like how optimistic we were because we, we saw increasing numbers all the time. Uh, also, you know, like the other indicators were looking better and better and better comparing to the previous all 2016. So in, in the February, we were finally out after two years. We all were clapping hands, we were happy, we were partying. And then suddenly, uh, I would say, like, fuck up came because that update which we released, totally not, you know, like, not tested, hit the market, hit the players who were there before, and the backlash came really quickly. So the definition of, of YOLO, one of my colleagues said, YOLO means something which is totally unplanned, and it's done because we believe it's the great thing. It's not planned, it's not tested, it's not validated. Let's just do it because we think it's the awesome idea. So this is what we use now in the company for that. The biggest problem, again, as I said, as I said before, was that we decided not just to polish something small, but we, di we did change the whole core of the gameplay totally from the scratch. We did it for four months. We didn't test it, we released it. This is the this is a couple of descriptions of what we changed, you know, like changing the change the amount of missions, how the how do people were, you know, like were able to play the game. And as you can see, from four point six stars in just a couple of days we dropped down to four. Old users started to play, uh, really, you know change uh, they, they start to change their uh, reviews uh, to one stars. And it took us over the 10 days to get back to the 4.6, but the damage was already done because, as you can see, uh, the bad rating cut off between 30 to 70 percent of organic traffic, and it nearly cost us the whole company. Like in that time, on the end of February, we were facing 
uh, very possibly bankruptcy situation. We almost committed suicide. So now what to do? Like, like what next? There is a couple of more things. For example, like the estimates of the costs. They were much higher because I'm not, in, you know, like including the cost of the team to that. So what next? You know, like beginning of the March, after two years of the work, we just destroy everything we were working on. We were not able to do anything. We were not able to think about like how to fix it, what to do. And luckily, uh, because we are really heavily into networking, we got a couple of interesting contacts. And the next part of the presentation is about how we used YouTubers and influencers to survive and to save the company. We also got, uh, thanks to the networking, we also got uh, very skill, uh, help from very skilled free-to-play designers who help us to identify the issues and the problems and what to do with the game. And what we did at the time, we started to do a sold out. So we survived purely on selling out all the content in the first couple of days. So, April. Uh, with the two guys on board on a regular basis, we and after uh, like a month of deconstructing of what was really wrong and what we did wrong, we created a plan, and we kick off thanks to thanks to uh, influencer startup Matchmate, a cooperation of the influencer marketing, and as you can see, the numbers started to get back really quickly. And we were lucky because there were n there was not a game which were compared to ours. We got really quickly, thanks to the great creatives and funny gameplay on the very beginning and the, uh, the, the greatly done ap uh, visual appeal, we were able to do, to be return of po investment, ROI, positive in a couple of days, up to 14. And we got finally a very, gra uh, very good, uh, very good ter uh, audience of players. From nearly like one, one and a half thousand new organic instas, we went back with, with, with the influencer marketing up to 15K. And we returned back to being nearly break even. We were really slowly to be able to pay for our own work and development by ourselves. A couple of more, more details and more data. The tide from being not profitable and having no money to run the company changed really drastically because with all these changes, with the guy who finally understand the free-to-play economy and who help us to remove the things which were said badly, and in combination with the influencer marketing with the YouTubers, we were able to start to generate and to you know like grow really, uh, really, really fast in the revenues uh, from 20K per month to 40, 60, 80, up to nearly 200 per you know like couple of months. Again, you know, a couple of points about like what we did and how we did it. Uh, this is a result of the first design. They call it designers call it de design extravaganza. They spent nearly a week working on data breakdown and what to do. And as you can see, the, the first release after these, all these changes, we immediately saw that increase in engagement of the players. The new economy and the new setup, which we spent a couple of weeks on, you know, like brought really quickly first, you know, like first fruit in increasing, increasing data. And we saw increase in all aspects, which means average revenue per user, average revenue per paying user, and others. I also started to do achievements, so each month right now I'm you know like writing down what we achieved actually. So as you can see, in the middle of May we had uh, nearly a million installs, most of them done by Google, and just a couple of days after Google you know like surpassed that million as well. Uh, June was for us uh, a month of the new hope because we were able finally to get an influencer who was able to move. Uh, who was able really to deliver a lot of installs. That guy is an Italian, uh, Italian guy called Ciccio Gamer, and together with you know like continuous updates on the game, we were uh, you know like we got over 100k per month in revenues. We introduced new mechanics 
to the game restriction because um, one crazy idea how to be innovative where to create a free to play game without any restriction mechanics which prove after a year of development and test as like a no go uh, what we can see here is the direct impact of the Italian guy. This is actually him in the middle of the picture. A uh, couple of things: how to how to lower down the cost of you know like cost of the videos was to deliver their own skin, the influencer skill, into the game, so the so the fans of the guy can play and look exactly like him. Plus, a specialized offers. Again, a lot of numbers showing that we were increasing with the KPIs. And one of my most uh, favorite slides, with, uh, with the first set of videos with this guy, we were able to be number seven uh, application in Italy. For a short time, we were able to be number one strategy game and pass everybody for a, for a short period of time. More KPIs showing the, you know, like the release versions and Increasing, increasing success of the game. Also, with the, uh, with the with the players which came from this channel, we were able to even you know like grow from the 4.6 star to even more to 4.772, because those players who came through the influencer videos were uh, were really engaged. They play more. They you know like return more. They spend more money. Uh, another couple of achievements. Per, per the June. And now my most favorite month of this year, which is July, we were able to touch nearly 200K gross revenues in dollars. We proved that the repeated videos with some of the influencers, some of the YouTubers are worth it and they are, they are you know, like, uh, they are bringing more and more people and re-engaging re the, uh, the old players. And we started to test the PPC or UA campaigns. So we, we start to test purchasing people through Facebook, for example. As you can see in this picture, all those peaks are, each of them is a video from a YouTuber. So as you can see, even the impact on, uh, on the income and on the revenues was growing with each simple next video. And the effect of that guy again on the ratings. Also, like this, this, this is like a first-hand, first-hand information with, and, and and like a hard data from the from the uh, from the campaigns. We were able to nearly double the average revenue per user, which means that's the repu 0.40. That's an amount which, on average, each of the player, no matter if he's play, she, he or she is playing or not, spent in the game. And we were able to nearly double the day seven retention, which means that not just one guy came after uh, after seven days from install. We finally have two, over two, which was awesome achievement. We also did a couple of more big A-B tests because what we decided and what we saw clearly is if we'll re uh, repeat it again with non-tested up up updates, we'll probably die as a company. So since that time, we are running like a process pipeline on one big campaign per six to eight weeks and smaller campaigns which are a couple of them within one week each. Also what we saw was a very very like amazing result of paid, uh, paid acquisition on Facebook. So we were not looking for two and a half to four dollars per one install. We were able to be in a range of 20 to like 80, 90 cents. Which together with the, which, which together with the average revenue per user allow us to repeat the campaigns and, and, and scale it really slowly. My Julia achievements, for me, one of the most important, like, one of the most awesome thing was that someone in China decided that our game is so good that he'll clone it. So we had our first clone, there is the link for the game. And we finally got over two million installs. Now, uh, a short discussion about what happened, because till the July, from, May, uh, from 
April to July, we just saw increase. Each month we achieved something, and it was really awesome. But obviously, sooner or later, even the YouTubers, they are lim there, there is a limited amount of them. So what we were trying really was to fix the game and to found another guy who is similar to, to the Italian sux successful Ciccio. And I'm sorry to say that we failed so far. Like none other YouTuber, and we tried to work with like 40 of them and release like 60 to 70 videos in the last five months. None of them repeated the none of them repeated the success of that first Italian guy. We also were heading for the US. As you can see, this is a sketch of a skin of a guy who is called Galadon. He's a, with his son, they are two famous YouTubers focusing on Clash Royale. And we were really hoping that they can help us, they can be the next one hit and this time for the North America. Unfortunately, the overall process, as you can see, took from eight to nine weeks. That's also one of the key learning, which I'll mention at the very end, that these guys are totally unpredictable. Like, it's nearly impossible to plan something and set it in stone and do a proper roadmap. We, still, we, we are still, even now, using the Chichio guy, but even his, Two million followers, their their engagement is you know like dropping slowly. Uh, back in August and uh, like mid August and mid September, we were not able to find more YouTube, more influencers, more YouTubers, which you know like. Uh, influenced the re uh, revenues later in uh, uh, in October, so we dropped nearly 70% down, and we stopped being profitable again. So yeah, moving to September, we did a third big A/B test. We focused on something we believe will be the one final change, which will help us to you know like to increase and scale up the spendings on the new players. And finally, to get into position when we are not so nervous about any small change done. And that proved a little bit wrong because it was again our expectation versus what people and what players really want. This time we were able to we were able to secure a smooth smooth transition. So we didn't do the mistake as we did in February, which is another key learning. And the US influencers after eight weeks of waiting were totally disaster. As you can see, I made a small co uh, co a compare of those two guys. So it's a father and son focus on Clash Royale channel that together have four million in, uh, followers. The video was said it will deliver in average half a million to 800,000 views with a proper conversion. What we saw was the absolute nightmare because for the money we spent, we got 140K views only from the 4 million followers. And we got only 1,500 installs from these two guys. Let's compare it with the, with the Italian guy who released a video the day before. He alone delivers Sorry. He alone delivers from his 2 million followers 182,000 views and 15,000 installs. So the picture with the money, with the gems, are those two guys having our own money, which we pay them for the, for the campaigns. What to do, what, uh, what we did in the October, unfortunately, uh, not just you know, trying to survive as a, small, as a startup with investment, we also are solving and trying to sort out ongoing process, which means get a proper people on proper positions. So we got a new, a new skilled free-to-play designer. His name is number seven, and he's, not, he's already no, no, no longer with our company after a couple of weeks. We saw finally the massive drop in revenues, which we predicted back in September, because for example, iOS is sending money 35 days later, and you know, like money is from you know, like. Uh, for example, video ads companies are coming even later, like 45 days. So we were able to predict what will happen in October. Uh, and again, like m multiple times before, we were discussing what to do to finally, you know, like break the nut and you do something with the game. This month, <laughs> we have design number eight. Finally, we really believe this is the guy, this will be the pro proper match. Uh, we are changing the time of the dropping revenues, thanks to, thanks to you know, like, dip, like dip, 
differentiation, diversification of our marketing activities. So we are no longer dependent only on YouTubers, but we finally are able to run campaigns on purchasing people through the Facebook. We are testing really quickly a new, you know, new visuals. New, new. Each week we are, you know, derivating new, uh, new concept of an ad for a Facebook, and we were able to do really quickly a decision on whether the previous A-B test was good or not, like a big one, really, really big one. So regarding the next steps, I really hope that the guy who came yesterday and who will join us from Monday will be the proper fit. Seems so far, yes, he's an awesome guy. So number eight will be finally the hit and the match. We're going finally after two years of running uh, in a circles without any new gameplay modes and we now, you know, ex uh, like expanding what the people can do in our game. We're going to do first, you know, gameplay driven events during this Christmas. And we are, uh, we, uh, we're happy that we can, we are allowed actually, thanks to the YouTubers and the decisions we did in the last six months, we are able to revamp the game and, you know, plan for the new release this time, probably with the support of. Apple and Google as well. If I should somehow describe which were the biggest, fa uh, what, 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 what are the biggest, you know, learning and fails, we believed coming from a big company where you know like there is hundreds of people and each one is specialized in some part of work, we really believe that we know what we are doing when we started the company and when we decided to do this project. We really believe that we know our shit that in the end of the day was not true totally even after like seven years of uh, experience we were not able to see disaster and we were not able to see you know like the red lights all over the place not having a creative guy in the office for months and then switch them really hectically is also a thing which probably should not happen to anyone who wants to you know, start their own company. We didn't go really, quick, uh, really quickly to soft launch. That's something which we, which we were told for multiple times that go soft launch as soon as possible. You know, like it's nice, it's written in the books, it's said by the people, by the professionals, by successful people. It's so easy when, you know, like the product and the company make it to, do, to give an advice do a good product to be successful. That's why, for example, my presentation was, you know, like really information heavy and data heavy, because when we were looking for advice, the advice we were getting back from some people and, you know, like during shows like this, if you do a great product, you'll be successful. So thank you very much right now. Now I know <laughs> I can go back and fix that on our end. So going to the soft launch, as soon as possible, even with it, like 20% of the content, of the final plan content, is the right way to go. Because if we do it, we'll see issues maybe a year before, and the year difference in cost of the company is hundreds of thousands of euros. And also amount of share which we got in our own hands. Reading and understanding the data, we are really lucky that we have a great people around us and we have a support from people who really know how to do, how to collect and how to read the data. Jakub, thank you. <laughs> Postponing important decision, which means don't yellow it, because this is exactly what we did actually. But when the decision is made, execute really quickly. This is also what we didn't do. We had a guy, he was a nice, nice person. We used to you know, like know each other for a long time. He was a creative lead on the project for a couple of months. And we knew that there are issues because he don't understand it properly. Yet we didn't do the decision. We postponed it for over half a year, which was negative, which also negatively you know, like influenced the overall process in 2017. And of course, don't no, no repeat the mistakes. So that's why our creative number seven left the company after five weeks and not seven months. The key learning, find your own way. Everybody is saying that. In our case, our own visual, our own animation and fun style really help, is really helping us to pop up, pop out from the crowd and to lower the cost of the CPI, cost per install. 
and it's a significant change. We are able to lower it down 10 to 100 times comparing to some other companies on the market. It raised funds and frequent. Don't try to break the standards. We tried. Free to play game without the restriction is not working at all. So if anyone is planning to do a free to play game, just you know, like use a way how you'll be able to control the session, what the people actually do in the game. Not like us. We just allowed everything on the very beginning and then we, we were surprised that people are leaving after three days. And there is nothing like a luck. It's being able to do a decision at a specific time, meeting specific people. And that's it. Nothing like luck is, you know, it's really not existing. What we, uh, what we saw in the influencer marketing, a couple of uh, key hard facts. In, uh, traffic players who are coming after watching their own favorite YouTuber have much higher attention, so they are much more to return back to the game than organic. It's obvious, but it's worth to mention it. Uh, they also, these people also have much bigger, much bigger engagement into game. They want to identify with their, with their hero. They're producing also a lot of higher and better reviews, as long as you don't piss the guy, piss off the guy or them with a new update which is not tested. And with proper approach and with proper match, you are able to lower down the ECPI, which means cost per install, including organic people who are which are coming not through that through that, you know, like campaign, but from you know like same territory but different channels, like down by four. Some soft facts which are more like our own let's say idea or like conclusion. It's extremely difficult to cooperate with influencer, uh, influencers and with you know guys from YouTube because there is a lot of it's kind of like a hit right now. A lot of companies just realize that there is a way how to pay X amount of money to a guy who has two million followers and he'll just you know like tell his audience buy this or play this or you know like do this and to prepare doing it. The flip side is that those people right now feel and smell the money. That's, that's it. Also, they are mostly young and they are not able to keep the deadlines and you know, like keep the agreed roadmap and planning. Their appetite for money grows over time with more and more videos. And so far, it's not like an ad, but a company called Matchmate works so uh, work best. And we tried four or five already in the last six, six months. So, any recommendation to, for example, to go with or without publisher? We decided to, we want to keep the game and the IP as a, our property, so we decided to go maybe harder way, but as I saw it from other companies who are working with publishers, it's not necessarily true. We decided to go without a publisher. The decision was that we want to have everything in our hands, and if we fail, we screw it. Us, no one else. Yeah. If you'll, uh, we're now considering to work on more prototypes, what we want to do, get it out in three months, not a year and a half. That's one of the biggest key learnings. Unfortunately, I'm sorry to say it's easier for us to do it on Android because we can do it immediately. They have a nice tools how to test, for example, icons and you know, like the click-through rate on the icons and how the, how the store performed. At not at any cost, don't do decision based on Philippines. This is a mistake which we did as well. What I found out after a couple of weeks of depressions that Philipp people in Philippines are awesome and they can show you, you know, like how, like obvious issues in the game which were not tested in the bigger audience before, but they also their salary is really small, their phones are really old, and their data. Are not so good, is not so good, which means that in the end of the day, you're reading wrong data. And this is what happened to us. And it took us like four months to realize and to spend 10, uh, ten times more for acquisition of a people in Germany, for example. But we immediately see the result. And we were able to identify what was the issue, for example, hardware optimization, data transfer of additional gaming data to the, to the, to the phone. 
And as I said before, take some time before making an important decision, but when it's done, just do it immediately. We didn't do it in multiple times. It cost us a lot of money. And also sometimes after some decisions which are postponed more and more and more, people are not staying friends. It's happening. I would like to thank to you know a lot of people who are helping us. As I said, networking for us is extremely important because it was the networking and the knowledge of the proper contacts and people who help us to survive this hectic year and this adventure of 2017 self-publishing What the Hand game on iOS and Android. So thank you very much, especially to Gabko. <laughs> so don't hesitate to contact me. I'll be here till the end of this show. I'm the guy sitting at the Water Hand booth. If you'll be interested in you know, like discussing more, or if you'll be interested to obtain the presentation, just you know, like come talk to me, and I'll send it to you right after, probably Monday. So you can you know, like see all the data and all the hard facts in the detail. It's a little bit overwhelming, I admit that. But in the end of the day, we were visiting shows to see this kind of information and to have the first hands on what the people do, what were the decisions, rather than do a nice game and you'll be successful. So that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michal. Are there any questions? I have one hand, second hand, and is there a third hand? Hi. So I have. Well, kind of two questions, actually. It's yep. two parts. First, why did you decide to change the logic of the game? And second question, what was the difference in the previous and the new version? Uh, thank you. This is something which I believe like, is like a small pain in the hearts of the whole team. Why we do it without a proper free-to-play designer, it's extremely difficult to balance the game itself. Like a lot of people know theories, a lot of people know how to create a concept, but know the concept and deliver a game which is optimized and which is not a content treadmill trap is extremely difficult. So what we did is that first year and a half, we were producing handcrafted content in our missions. And what we saw, and the question was, are we able to maintain that? That was the question number one. Are we able to do a fun missions? Are we able to create each couple of weeks for a regular updates, a funny, fun content and a new content? That's one question which we, which we put to ourselves or ask ourselves. And the second was, uh, are we even able to balance it properly and keep it? The guy who came that time, he's still my, my friend. We are not so much into talk as we used to be before. But he came with the idea that what we can do, we can replace handcrafted missions done by design by a set of uh, like a profiles of existing players. So the, actually what we did, we tried, and it was one of the experiments, we tried to apply player versus player in asynchronous mode and apply it to the classic, let's say, mission map. So the goal was we want to cut the time with production of more content. We believed in that time that simple math will do the work for us. So for example, if someone's profile strength is 400 and you have two, you can pass as long as you are at least 330, for example. Let's say an example. And we also believe that 80 missions are a very small number for people. We, we found a guy who were able to play it within hours, which scared us a lot. So the solution from 80 to increase it to 1200 and to remove that handcrafted fun part, but to, focus, to try to deliver other people, parties and setups as an opponent on the mission map. The flip side was that it was even worse than before. The numbers dropped down by, if I'm right, like 15%. And the solution was not good because sooner or later all of the people starts with the same setup. So what we saw actually, all same parties for hundreds of missions. So it was even worse. And that was, 
We truly believe that we are doing a great thing and a good decision. In the end of the day, it, it, as, as it proved in February, it was one of the worst decisions we did in the entire history of the, of the company. Uh, hello, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I would like to ask you uh, if, if you can elaborate more about the collecting feedback and comments from your users. Uh, how, uh, what tools and what communication channels did you, did you use to collect the feedback? And how did you analyze uh, the feedback? And uh, how did you implement that, those changes from that feedback? So I believe the biggest, uh, like the best answer is after this presentation to get that guy with the camera because he's the, he's the, are you already the CPO or something? Don't be shy. <laughs> so these guys started their company sometime like us. And like, you know, the thing is, as I said, being a corporate guy brings you luxury of having a lot of professionals, but also keeps you blind to a lot of lot of work and a lot of you know like expertise. What we believe is really being a data driven and like people in reviews, I mean like journalists maybe or you know like whatever, it's always subjective. What we want to do, what we wanted to do is don't go this way. So we found an agreement with Jakub and with, uh, with, with the company he's working for. It's called Salens. And they are running, uh, they are running system which is gathering all data which we want and which we ask for. So what we do, we actually evaluate what people do, not what they think and what they would say, tell you. So that that's that's the difference. It took us months. I would say maybe it took us <laughs> like two years to start listening to those guys with no offense, uh, but in the end of the day, the decision that we'll just stop being subjective and having our own things what's better and listen to them, because it's like with mathematics, Math like math is not lying, that's it, it is, somehow. For me it's magic, but it is. So this is what we're doing. We're working with professionals who are gathering data and knows how to read them and explain them, rather than asking for subjective feelings. All right, uh, Michal, thank you again very much, and uh, well. And we'll move on to the next talk in a few minutes.